In this video, I want to introduce the notion of partial derivatives. Now, in Calc 1, you learn about derivatives, right? You have a function of a single variable, and that function has a derivative with respect to that variable. It tells you the slope. It tells you the rate of change. You can think of it a couple different ways. Now, with functions of several variables, there isn't just one variable, and so there isn't just one derivative. So we were gonna, we'll talk about partial derivatives as being the partial with respect to one variable or the partial derivative with respect to the second variable or if you have more variables, right, you can just keep taking partial derivatives with respect to each individual uh, independent variable. So here's the definition. Uh, given a function of two variables, uh, we define the partial derivative of f with respect to x as, here's the notation, partial f, partial x. It looks like df dx, but it's a kind of a scripty d. Um, in LaTeX, you would use backslash partial. Um, in LaMap here, where I'm creating this stuff, I just type in partial, and then when I put it in math mode, it understands that to mean this symbol. Anyway, partial of f with respect to x is the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h comma y minus f of x comma y over h, provided the limit exists. Right. Something to notice here the y is not changing. The y here and the y there are the same. This is the partial with respect to x because you're just changing the x variable. This is f of x plus h. This is just f of x. So the it looks like the derivative definition we had in Calc 1, but there's just this comma y, this comma y, but this is just in the x direction. Likewise, we define the partial derivative of f with respect to y as partial of partial y equals the limit as h goes to zero of f of x comma y plus h minus f of x y over h. So in this one, the x here is the same as the x there, and it's the y that's changing. So this is just the derivative in the y direction. Partial with respect to x is telling you the derivative in the x direction. y is being considered a constant. Likewise here, the partial with respect to y, you have x being considered a constant, and you're varying y. So the, the picture, uh, here's just, you know, one example of a, an upside down paraboloid. Um, and I have a, a point indicated here. And the x direction is moving the positive x direction in this picture. It's going out that way. Um, and so the slope in the x direction is the slope of this blue line. In fact, the grids on that surface, it's a constant value of y here, and we're looking at the slope along that curve in the x direction. y is being held constant. On the other hand, the grid lines going this direction are all constant values of x. So as I move along that one, I'm changing the y value, and I'm looking at how the z is going up and down. Right? So partial with respect to x is change x, and look at what happens to z. Partial with respect to y is change y, and look what happens to z. And in this case, um, since the positive x direction is moving that way, it looks like I'm going downhill, so it's got a negative slope in the x direction. And likewise, the positive y-axis is coming out at me, and so as I move this way, uh, it looks like it's going downhill. To get a better idea here, I do have this live. Yeah, so you can see here... Uh, that that blue line is just tangent at that point, so you're looking at that slope for the partial with respect to x, and the green line is just tangent in that direction, so you're looking at the slope in the y direction. Partial derivatives are telling you slope in either just the x direction or just the y direction. Now, here's just an example of how you would calculate it. Well, we can go and use the definition, but the definition is the same as what it was in Calc 1, except that you've got this variable that's considered a constant. Right? Part with respect to x, y is considered a constant. And you can show that all the shortcut rules that you had in Calc 1 still work. So, for instance, here, if I have this function x times sine y, and I say, what's the partial derivative with respect to x? Well, if I'm doing the partial with respect to x, then y is a constant, like 7, right? So it's just a number. And then the sign of that number is still just a number. So this function here, although it looks kind of, you know, a little complicated anyway, x sine y, this is just x times a constant. 
And the derivative of x times a constant is just the constant. So the partial of this with respect to x is just psi y. On the other hand, the partial of this with respect to y, consider x is a constant. And now you take the derivative of a constant times the sine of y. Well, that would be the constant times the cosine of y. First one, you're considering x as your variable, y is a constant. Second one, you're considering y as your variable, and x is a constant. And the constant here, the second one, right, was a constant times a function, and the derivative of a constant times a function is the constant times the derivative of the function. So the sine y turned into cosine y, but the x just came along for the ride. Here's another example. f of x is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Partial with respect to x, well, this is stuff raised to the half power. So it's a half, there's the two in the denominator, times this stuff to the minus a half, there's the square root in the denominator being the negative half power, but then times the derivative of what's inside. But well, you got to remember, I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. And so the derivative of x squared plus y squared with respect to x is just 2x, and that's the thing on the top. The plus y is plus y squared is just a constant, and so the derivative of plus a constant is just plus zero, and so it's two x plus zero. I suppose you could have here, but the twos cancel out, leaving this. One thing to, to keep in mind as you're doing this, uh, I've seen this confusion happen um, quite a bit in students in the past. Um, in Calc one, we do this thing called implicit differentiation where you're looking at something like this with x's and y's in it, and you're taking the derivative with respect to x. In which case, you would end up here taking the derivative, if you were doing it implicitly with respect to x, you would be saying 2x plus 2y dy dx. Right? But with implicit differentiation, you're making the assumption to start with that y is a function of x. And so it has a derivative with respect to x. Here, with partial derivatives, we're not saying y is a, a, a function of x. We're saying y is an independent variable. It is completely independent of x. And so when you take the partial with respect to it, that's zero. When you change x, you don't change y at all. Okay? Um, if y was a function of x, okay, you know, changing x might change y. But it's not in this case. We are thinking of x and y as independent. So the partial of the, the derivative of the inside there, the partial derivative with respect to x is just 2x plus 0. Likewise, when we take the partial derivative with respect to y, you know, it looks the same to start with. It's 1 half times that stuff to the negative half, which is y squared it's in the denominator, but then times the derivative of the inside. But you're taking the partial derivative with respect to y. Well, the partial derivative with respect to y of x squared is 0. Partial derivative of y squared with respect to y is 2y, and then the 2's cancel out. The, you can have some really big, crazy-looking functions thinking, oh my goodness, how am I going to take the, you know, I have to do product rules and quotient rules and chain rules and blah, 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 when it turns out that most of it might be just a constant because it's the other variables than the one you need the derivative with respect to. Now, this also works with more than two variables. Um, but with more than two variables, you have more um, partial derivatives. So, for instance, here's a here's a function of three variables. Function of, you know, f of x, y, z is x times y plus z squared. If I take the derivative with respect to x, I'm thinking of both y and z as constants now. If you think about in space, right, you've got the x direction and the y direction and the z direction. Um, and you, if you move in just the x direction, your y and z components aren't changing. If you move just in the y direction, your x and z components aren't changing. Or likewise, you can move just vertically in the z direction and your x and y don't change. So when you take the derivative with respect to one of those variables, the partial derivative with respect to one of those variables, the other two variables are constants. So the partial with respect to x here, this is just x times a constant plus another constant. Well, the derivative of the plus the other constant is going to be zero. But the derivative of x times a constant is just that constant, y. Likewise, the partial derivative with respect to y, x is now a constant, c is the constant. So the partial derivative of this would just be the constant x plus 0. And the partial with respect to typo, that looks better, partial with respect to z is x and y are constants. 
So x times y is just a constant. Uh, you don't have to do a product derivative to anything. This is just a constant. The derivative of constant is 0 plus the derivative of z squared. But the derivative of z squared with respect to z is just 2z. Okay. Treat all the variables as constants except for the one that you're taking the partial with respect to. Now, I claim, actually, you've been doing this for a while. Because here's something that we might have done in a Calc 1 class, right? That you might be looking at y equals a sine bx. If, you know, we look at harmonic motion, for instance, vibrations, something going up and down, right? It has, a, it has an equation like this, where b is telling, is making it go faster and slower. Bigger values of b would be a faster vibration. Slower values of b would be a slower vibration. Uh, a is the amplitude. Do you have just small amplitude or do you have big amplitude, right? Um, and you can look at what's the derivative with respect to x. And you just say, hey, dy dx is, um, you know, a times, that's just a constant, so a times the cosine of bx, chain rule, then it kicks a b out in front, so ab cosine bx. That is, in Calc 1, you just automatically said, oh, the amplitude's constant, that that coefficient in there, b is constant, x is your variable. But they technically, they aren't constants. Uh, a is a variable. And we're just telling you, treat it like you would treat a constant. b is a variable. Treat it like you would treat a constant. Take the derivative with respect to x. Well, that's precisely what partial derivatives are. Right? Really, what we have here is y is a function of a, b, and x. And it's a sine bx. And what we did was we calculated the partial of y with respect to x. It's no different. This is exactly what we would have done before. You just treat all your other variables as, as a constant. Take the derivative with respect to the one that you're considering the variable. Graphically, this is a little trickier to, to visualize. Um, you know, I could draw the graph of a function of two variables and look at slopes of tangent lines. Um, it's hard to draw the graph of a function of three variables because it's off of the fourth dimension. However, I think we can still understand what each of those things are. For instance, if you think of that function of three variables being a temperature function, so at each point in space it's telling you what the temperature is. Right? And then you can say, from you know, pick a particular point and say, if I move just from this point, move one step in the x direction, how does the temperature change? Right? Then you'd be looking at the partial derivative with respect to x. Or from this point, if I move one step in the y direction, how does the temperature change? That would be the partial with respect to y. And take here, move one step in the z direction. How does the temperature change? That's the partial with respect to z, right? That, yes, technically it will be the slope of a tangent line somewhere out in the fourth dimension, but that's a little tricky to visualize. But yet I can still think of the rate of change in my function as I move in just the x direction, or if I move just in the y direction, or if I move just in the z direction. How fast is my function changing as I move in that direction? That's what the partial derivative is telling you. All your derivative rules hold. Um, product rule, quotient rule, you know, add, subtract, multiply by a constant, things like that. Uh, the chain rule, the chain rule um, applies as well. I used it in, in one of the examples above, right? Actually, I used it right here as well. Um, but there's other chain rules that we will discuss in a, a subsequent video, uh, depending on how you're combining functions together. If you're taking a function of two variables and plugging it into a function of one variable, if you're, you know, the, there's all kinds of different different things. And in fact, it leads to um, what I call Calc 1 Nirvana. But that's for another video.